Hello, this is Guillermo Campitelli and in this new series of videos I'm going to explain cases in which uh, the, we are interested in the effect of two nominal variables on one numerical variable and we are going to use the three parameter estimation approaches, the two model comparison approaches and the two hypothesis testing approaches to the situation both in a between subjects uh, design and a within subjects design. Okay, so uh, this is the causal model of the new case study. We've got the variables match and color and as independent variables or uh, causal variables in the causal graph and reaction time. Uh, we also have unknown variables. Uh, basically what we are saying is that the nominal variables match and color affect uh, reaction time but there are also other unknown variables that also affect the uh, variability of reaction time. Okay so let's start with the between subjects design. This is a recognition memory study with 120 participants. In a recognition memory study there is a learning phase in which um, items are presented, in this case they are landscapes and then there is a recognition phase in which some old um, items are presented and new items are presented so basically old are the items that were presented in the learning phase and the task of the participants is to determine whether each of these uh, uh, items in the uh, recognition phase uh, are old or new. And um, typically the accuracy is measured but sometimes the, the task is, is said to be rather easy and what the, the variable of interest is the reaction time, how fast people uh, recognize um, the images. So um, in this case there are two variables of interest, the color of the uh, landscape at the learning phase, whether it was black and white or a color landscape or, or image and the other variable is match and match means whether um, there is a match between the color presented in the learning phase and the recognition phase or not. So. In both cases, the, the, the uh, variables have two values um, and they are nominal variables. The dependent variable is reaction time, as I indicated, and 30 participants were randomly, so 120 participants were randomly assigned to each condition, with, uh, so to have 30 participants in each condition. Condition one is um, the, the, the images were black and white in the learning phase and there was no matching. Condition 2, they were black and white in the learning phase and there was matching in, with the images in the recognition phase. In condition 3, the uh, images at the learning stage were color images and there was no matching and in condition 4 there was uh, uh, color images and there was match. Okay, so now let's do some uh, descriptive statistics using JASP and um, basically we go to uh, the descriptives. Um, okay, so I already have my um, my data set uh, loaded into uh, JASP so basically you can see that I use coding um, so basically um, we've got the uh, participants in B1 is the number of participants so we've got 120 um, then in we've got the variable color and the variable match so color is 0 is bl means black and white and match 0 means no no match. So in uh, here, so we've got 30 from 31 to 60. The color is black and white, and there is match. 
and 61 to 90 the color is uh, one so it is and they are color images at the learning uh, learning stage and there is no match and finally um, from 91 to 120 there was uh, the color is uh, their color images and there is match uh, between the the learning and the recognition phases uh, here I've got the reaction time for each participant and here I've got the variable condition so basically the 30 uh, first participants went to the condition 1 condition 2 for the uh, the other 30 then, uh, then 3 and then 4 so I'm going to use for some analysis the condition and for uh, some analysis the variables okay so let's start with the condition I'm going to descriptives descriptive statistics and okay let's move and track this so I don't want to see the image and uh, so let's start to put in reaction time in in this box and now I'm going to split by condition in then I'm going to do match and color okay so uh, then I can do um, uh, plots um, I can do distribu distribution plots like these ones or I can do uh, display box plots like these ones or I can put the violin element but violin and box plot together don't, don't, don't go well one which is one or the other and you can choose the jitter elements or basically the data uh, and this, this time works well in statistics then you can uh, tick whatever you are interested in and um, basically when we do parameter estimation we will need the standard error of the mean so we've got um, um, these descriptives for the conditions and I'm going to show you those descriptives um, in the slides okay so basically this is a, a violin plot that works uh, well also in my um, in my graph I added a bit of more information here so basically this one are the conditions condition 1 condition 2 condition 3 condition 4 um, the violin plot tells you that the third condition the, there was more variability than in the other three now the green horizontal lines represent the mean of each condition the yellow lines uh, represent the mean of um, in this case the no condition sorry the no um, value of the variable match and the this yellow one the yes um, the yes uh, the mean of the yes value of the variable um, match so you can see that no and yes they have some uh, difference in uh, the mean now the black lines are the, the color variables so so the values of the color variable so black and white are this black line you, you can see that these are two black and white conditions and color is this this is the mean of color you can see that the mean are the means are very close to each other so this suggests that there may be a difference um, in um, the, the match variable maybe may have an effect on on um, reaction time but it doesn't seem that the the color one has an effect so just by visual inspection we can already say something about it um, okay so these are um, the graph is the same so I don't want to explain the, but this is the um, the descriptives by a variable so I'm going to show you how to how to get these um, uh, results so we need to go to JASP and instead of um, having so instead of having the variable condition as a split of reaction time we are going to use color 
and then match. So when we use color, we've got the descriptive statistics of the two values of the um, color variable and we can get also the standard error of the mean as well and then we can do the same with match uh, so basically here we've got the two conditions of the variable match and this is the descriptive statistics so let's move on to parameter estimation now okay so we are going to use just as well for parameter estimation and uh, basically we are going to the ANOVA analysis although in parameter estimation we are not going to do the whole ANOVA analysis but we use that um, uh, part of the software to get the estimates of means of conditions differences between means and conditions the means of the values of each uh, variable and the differences between those means okay so we go to ANOVA uh, sorry, I do it again. ANOVA here and ANOVA again there. And the dependent variable is reaction time and the fixed factors are match and color. Okay, so what we need in, in the postdoc tests, we put match and color. We can put shift and select the two or we can do it by one, one by one. And in additional options, marginal means, we put match and color, and if we put it there, put, um, um, now we've got here what we need. We need the marginal means, so in the variables match and color, comparis, so the mean of each value of the variable and we've got the standard error and the confidence interval. Now for the, com the, uh, the comparisons between um, each value, so in match 0 versus 1, this is the mean difference and standard error, we don't get the confidence interval, but we already know how to calculate it very easily by hand. Okay, so that's uh, what we get here. So we get the, the marginal means We've got the confidence interval in uh, in the comparisons. We only get um, the mean uh, difference and standard error, but no the confidence intervals. But we can calculate it by hand. Okay, so now um, let's move to sorry. Before we move to something else, uh, this is what the analysis I did before. What I had to show you is this. Uh, so this is the comparison between values of uh, each variable. So this is um, the uh, means and these are the mean differences. Okay, now we move on to um, Bayesian parameter estimation. And as we did uh, before, we are going to use uh, Rasmus Bath um, uh, web applet. And that web applet compares uh, data of two two uh, groups so basically we can do the same here we can compare conditions or we can compare uh, values of um, the in of the independent variables so I'm going to show you one uh, one example um, in order to do that I need to go to this website which is here and I need the Excel file of the date. So I'm going to get the Excel file. So here is the Excel file. This is the same that is, was uh, um, uploaded to JASP to do the analysis. So basically I have to copy and paste to do the Bayesian estimation with the Rasmus Bass website. So let's say I want to compare the reaction times of condition 1 versus the reaction times on condition 2. So then I just have to select the first 30 um, reaction times and copy and paste. Copy and then so data group 1. Just make sure I delete everything. And copy and paste, sorry, paste. And just in case delete the last paste, 
Um, then for data group 2, we go to the uh, subjects 31 to 60. Sorry, I'll do that again. So, select them, Control C and then Control V. Just get rid of that space at the end and click to start. And this software will start doing um, the Markov chain Monte Carlo simulations. So these are the simulations that we call quickly um, the distribution of mean differences between these two groups. And we've got other parameters. Um, this is the mean of group one and this is the mean of group two. This applet also estimates the standard deviation in each group so of the population from which these groups come. There is a, a parameter of normality that I'm not going to explain and it also uses effect size and here is the form. So it estimates the effect size statistic in the population, so the parameter, and, and this is the formula of the effect size. Um, Okay, so basically based on that analysis we can uh, we obtain uh, statistics of the um, of the posterior distribution and that gives us an, an estimation of the, the a point estimate of the mean which would be the mean of that posterior distribution and the confidence interval which would be the 2.5 percentile and the 97.5 percentile of those distributions is a confidence interval as I tell you um, the author of this analysis uh, Krushki uh, uses the high density interval but to me it's uh, more appropriate to say confidence interval it's also appropriate to uh, what uh, Krushki calls it but the idea is Krushki doesn't want to use confidence interval because that's the uh, um, term we use in the traditional statistics analysis but actually what I'm claiming is that in traditional statistics it's wrong to call it confidence interval but in Bayesian it is the right thing to do okay anyway um, now we are going to explain Ah, before I explain the um, uh, the resampling approach, this is um, I've already explained in a previous video. This is the prior of um, uh, sorry, this is not the prior. This is the probability density uh, well, uh, that we use to obtain the probability of the data. So basically, uh, this is uh, the reaction time in this case. In, uh, for each subject in each um, um, condition um, the probability of the data we are going to, in order to obtain the probability of the data we are going to use a T distribution with location parameter mu1 and uh, so uh, it would be one per uh, condition sigma 1 and this is a centrality, uh, sorry, a normality parameter called nu. Doesn't matter. Uh, and the priors for mu, which is the most important for us, is an in uninformative prior. So it's a flat, it's a normal distribution, but because the, uh, the standard deviation of the distribution is so long, so large, that the distribution is very, very flat. Um, so, um, it's it's in in uh, in practice it's almost the same probability for each uh, value. Okay, so um, and then we obtain the posterior distribution, which is what I showed you in uh, Rasmus Bath's website. Okay, so now let's move to resampling, and simply to show you, it's the same procedure as before. So we uh, we obtain resamples from um, each um, condition, if we want to compare conditions, or from each value of the um, 
of the variable. So in this case, I, as an example, I show you, uh, I want to compare black and white and color. So in order to obtain the, this um, sampling distribution, what I do is I resample from the two conditions in which the, the color variable takes the value black and white. And here I, I resample from the two conditions in which the variable color takes the, va the value color. And then we obtain the, uh, let's say 5,000, we create 5,000 new samples and we obtain the mean of those samples. So we've got 5,000 means and these are presented here in a histogram. And we also do the difference between the two means and we so we have five thousand difference mean differences and we represent it here in this graph 